Hey garden friends! Alright, so today we are back at my friend's house actually that I redid her garden. If you guys saw that video, I redid her garden um, earlier this year and we planted some daisies, a red twig dogwood if I'm remembering correctly, and then we planted something else too. Um, but I'm back because we're actually doing a really, I think, important video, but also like a really fun one because I get to come back and fix everything that has kind of gone wrong. So just to preface this, my friend unfortunately has um, had some health issues um, with her pregnancy. If you guys remember, I said she was having her second baby. And so they have been going through quite a bit of um, just some stress and stuff like that. Thankfully, everything's okay. The baby's fine. She's fine. But unfortunately, because of that, the garden has got a bit wild and it is overtaken with weeds. That all being said, I felt terrible She because I knew that I needed to mulch it and I didn't do that in the video. I didn't do that at all um, when I was here earlier, but I just ended up running out of time. I forgot the mulch and so I just told her, hey, do it when you can. And of course they got hit with all of this stuff they've been going through. So they didn't have a chance. So needless to say, mother nature did its work and it took over. So I'm back to go ahead and rip all that stuff out, see what's still alive underneath. I picked up a couple of zinnias on clearance while I was getting the mulch at Lowe's today. So if things have died, that's totally okay. I'll just rip some stuff out and then hopefully plant up some fairly easygoing plants that will do fairly well for her um, and bloom really long into, into fall. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you guys how I tackle weeds, especially overgrown flower beds, and then what I do to help prevent them from coming back. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need for this project is a razor blade. I actually realized in this clip that my razor blade was broken, so I ended up using some scissors, um, but a razor blade would definitely be the easiest. Then you're gonna need a good amount of mulch, and I would definitely overguesstimate rather than underguesstimate how much mulch you're gonna need, because I ended up running a little bit short here, and you really wanna heavily mulch. The next thing you're gonna need is a lot of cardboard, um, and you just wanna make sure that your cardboard doesn't have any plastic on it. So just make sure to remove any plastic tape or plastic labels, because you obviously don't want that hanging out in your garden, because it won't biodegrade, whereas cardboard will. The next thing you're going to need to do is just pull out your weeds. So I was able to get this done in about 30 minutes because the soil was really soft because I had just um, like disturbed all of this soil earlier this spring. So it was really soft and easy to pull everything out. If that's not the case for you, like maybe you've moved into a house and the garden hasn't been attended to in years, or maybe you're wanting to establish a garden bed in a new spot, where there's just grass, you can definitely go ahead and just cut the weeds or the grass down to about a quarter of an inch and then just lay your cardboard on top before pulling the weeds out. So that's always an option, really easy, super easy way to establish a garden bed. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and check and see if this nine bark has any life left in him. And I did see that he did seem a little bit still green. So what I ended up doing is since obviously he's not looking that great, I went ahead and cut him down by about half, if not two thirds. And the reason that I did this is because whenever you have a plant that's struggling, it's always a good idea to go ahead and cut off as much as you can without shocking the plant too much. And the reason for this is it's gonna signal the plant that it needs to grow and it needs to send off new growth. And then it's also gonna help the plant not to have to sustain so much foliage when it's already struggling. So it'll need less water and less nutrients. And then hopefully it can kind of just help that plant recover. So I went ahead and did that with pretty much all of the plants because they were all struggling a little bit. The only ones that I didn't do it with was the red twig dogwood. And then there's also a Shasta daisy in the back that I didn't do it with because they looked a little bit better. They were in a little bit better shape um, than the rest of the plants. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and just start piecemealing the cardboard together. So I went ahead and just started pulling it apart in manageable chunks, and then I'm kind of putting it around and just laying it out like you would kind of a puzzle, trying to cover up as much of the soil as I could. What you wanna do though is in this first clip, I am putting it pretty much right up to the red twig dogwood, and you'll see later in the video that I actually go back and fix that, and I cut out a perimeter around the um, red twig dogwood, and then also around the rest of my plants. The reason I do this is because even though cardboard is biodegradable, it is gonna take just a little bit more time for the water to be able to get through the cardboard. So because of that, you do wanna go ahead and cut out a little perimeter around each of your plants so that you can make sure they can get the water that they need. And so you won't eventually like um, 
you know, water stress your plants because they're not able to get as much water from rain or when you're watering your garden. So the way that I did it is I just did a big enough or berth around each plant um, as like the drip line. So essentially where the widest part of the foliage was, I went ahead and cut to that point. So for most plants, this is about anywhere from two to four inches around in a circumference around your plant. And that will just give it the ability to be able to get enough water. You will have to make sure to manage the weeds around the plants because they will come up right there at the, you know, at the root base, especially if you're struggling with grass like they were. Um, so just make sure to keep an eye on that. But the cardboard would do the majority of taking care of the weeds for you since um, all the open spaces will pretty much be covered from there. I started watering in the cardboard and then I realized that I forgot to plant the zinnias so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get these into the ground and then we're going to go ahead and water the cardboard in really well. From here I'm going to go ahead and start watering in the cardboard pretty liberally and what this is going to do is it's just going to help start adding some moisture into the cardboard. It's going to help it to mold to the ground and then it's just going to help also start that biodegradation process, degradation process, how do you say that? You know what I'm saying. So essentially it's just going to help start that process before we add our mulch. So after liberally watering in, liberally apply your mulch. So I would definitely suggest getting more than you think you need for this uh, because that will just help provide that second layer of defense against the weeds and will also help with everything just biodegrading properly and all that good stuff. Um, so once you've applied your mulch, then you are pretty much done. So I'm super excited with how this turned out. I think it looks so much better and is gonna be way better for her long-term like success with this garden. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out to grow our garden friend community. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks. Bye.